Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we will talk about um, some of the biomaterials used in uh, cardiovascular and ocular area. We have been looking at quite a lot of biomaterial used uh, in orthopedic as well as in dental. I thought uh, uh, another big area is cardiovascular and of course, uh, um, biomaterial used in eye. So, we will briefly touch upon the metals, the um, ceramics, the uh, polymers used in this area. So, cardiovascular they interact with the heart, blood and blood vessels. So, they have different functions. So, the failure modes could be mechanical failure for example, if you have the less left ventricle assist device or uh, a diaphragm valve which opens closes um, or a pump heart pump they can have mechanical failure. Uh, thrombosis blood clotting can uh, happen because of the device okay? and then um, blood vessels may get blocked. So, which can lead to strokes, paralysis, attacks, heart attacks, hemolysis because uh, the material surface may be little bit rough. So, it may activate uh, your platelets, okay? the, the red blood corpuscles though they can start uh, um, getting activated because of the friction and then um, excess tissue growth surrounding this device. So, the tissues may start growing and uh, which may lead to um, stress between the material and the tissues surrounding. Okay. So, these are divided into three categories the temporary devices that means like a tubing simple tubings oxygenators, arterial filters, hemodialysis, um, temporary internal devices the previous one was temporary external devices, internal devices like your catheters, guide wires used for uh, catheters, cannulae um, and if uh, uh, um, uh, if uh, any other uh, angioplasty uh, related activity is done, there could be many temporary devices. Then permanent devices, vascular grafts, patches, pacemakers, defibrillators, stents, artificial hearts, um, all these you know, valves and so on actually. So, we can have synthetic material, we can have natural or composite, synthetic could be polymers of course, metals, natural could be biological and tissue engineered like pericardia, arteries, veins natural polymers like collagen, heparin. So, the biological tissues could be autogenic from the individual, allogenic from the same species or from a donor, xenogenic uh, it could be from animal. So, each has its advantages and disadvantages. So, titanium, stainless steel, uh, nickel, titanium combination, cobalt, chrome all these are used. Polymers PTFE, uh, PET, uh, polyurethane, polyvinyl chloride and biological could be pericardia, arteries, veins, heart valves, collagen uh, used as material for cardiovascular application. Metals of course, are non-reactive, um, so good strength and biocompatibility titanium, stainless steel, gold, silver, okay, they are used quite a lot in lead wires. Um, of course, disadvantages there could be blood clotting, so they have to be um, coated with some anticoagulant uh, material or the patients have to for lifelong take uh, medication to prevent uh, coagulation of the blood that is a problem with metals actually. Okay. So, various uh, cardiovascular implants heart valves, silicone, PTFE, polyester, polyurethane okay, or biologically derived material. So, all these are used. Okay. So, advantages, disadvantages. Okay. So, like some of these are uh, very good. Uh, PTFE has good hemodynamic property, polyester is viscoelastic, polyurethane resistance to hydrolysis, but they could have calcification or thrombosis. Uh, biologically derived material of course, is very good, but then they are limited supplies. If you take metals, titanium, stainless steel, nitinol, all these are used in heart valves. Let us look at vascular grafts, PTFE okay, um, is used low thrombosis, high strength, of course, disadvantages, immune response, PET, tissue in growth, biocompatibility is a problem biologically derived material they are very good, but limited supply stents. A um, lot of metals are used, 
Okay, originally titanium was used, stainless steel, nitinol, cobalt, chromium, and then again coated stents, drug eluting stents, they are very good, durable, low thrombogenicity, excellent hemodynamics. Composites, carbon fiber based epoxy, they are also very good strength. Pacemaker, leads, polyurethane, metals like titanium, stainless steel, cobalt, chromium, platinum, chromium and so on actually. Let us look at uh, EPTFE that is expanded polytetrafluoroethylene, it is long, longevity is very good, there is a manufacturer called Gore-Tec, this is a picture of this, okay, this is used as a shunt, okay, it is connecting uh, um, different parts, uh, especially uh, arota, uh, okay. this is used for cardiac reconstruction, vascular grafts and pediatric shunts, these are all pediatric. So, this is made up of PTFE, this may be about uh, 2 2.5 mm diameter. Advantages, it encourages uh, low thrombogenicity, lower rates of restenosis, hemostatus, less calcification and biochemically inert. Okay. It is also res resistance to allergic and inflammation. Uh, disadvantage, negative immune response and thrombosis. PET, uh, it is chemically inert, biocompatible, uh, it is used in vascular grafts, large diameter vascular grafts, it's woven. Um, you can coat it with protein or collagen, albumin and so on to reduce blood loss. Uh, the crimped surface of PET helps stimulate tissue in incorporation, promotes endothelialization on graft surface, no calcification. Of course, um, it can create foreign body reaction with greater possibility of thrombosis formation. Polyurethanes, uh, it is thermoplastics used quite a lot in medical applications used in cardiac pacing leads, it is used in uh, other areas also. High shear strength, elasticity, transparency, lacks flexibility and high chance of thrombosis. P silicon copolymers are used in some of these to improve the flexibility. Okay. Uh, silicon coating, pacing leads maintain electrical properties for better pacing than PU alone. Polyolefins, polyolefins uh, they have good biocompatibility and chemical resistance, especially polyethylene and polypropylene. Okay, so, they are used as tubings, housings for blood supply, production of blood bags to store blood. Polypropylene is used for making heart valve structures okay, and so on actually. Carbon and ceramics, carbon, glassy carbon, they are used in heart valve components, uh, pyrolytic, good biocompatibility and thromboresistance high lubricity resistance to wear, graphite is used pyrolytic carbon coatings, okay. uh, sapphire used as bearings in high RPM implanted rotary blood pumps. So, um, they have blood pumps for patients whose heart is very weak and um, the heart is not able to pump, then of course, uh, you have uh, high RPM sapphires are used there as bearings. Ceramics, limited applications in cardiovascular devices. They are of course, used in hermetic seals on pacemakers, insulation and so on actually. Okay. Natural biomaterials, they are uh, natural biological in origin like autologous tissues that is tissues from the same patient you make use of it. Uh, so, there is no immunogenicity problems, okay, rejection problems are there, but of course, the supply is a big problem. Allogenic tissues, homographs, it is tissues from a donor supply again limitations, there could be immune rejection. Xenogenic, this could be from animals, this is an alternate, but there could be um, transmission of uh, disease. But uh, there is a lot of interest nowadays in uh, using animal tissues, especially for repair of valves, replacements and so on. Of course, there also you can have immune rejection as well as uh, disease getting uh, transmitted. Okay. Bovine, porcine, equine tissues are generally used in cardiovascular applications. Okay. So, some of these blood compatibility of uh, allograft of course, the, the donors own. So, very good uh, autografts best, strength and durability moderate, moderate, blood flow dynamics again is reasonably good. Okay. Um, sub mucosa of the small intestine, there is some interest in that, it is gaining pop popularity from porcine. It is prepared by opening the small intestine longitudinally followed by mechanical removal of the sub mucosa layer while keeping the basement membrane intact. Okay, then you decellularize the extracellular membrane sheets and which you sterilize it actually. 
So, this uh, sub mucosa of the small intestine ECM extracellular membrane it contains collagen 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, fibronectin, elastin and quite a lot of growth factors. So, they say it is extremely good okay, uh, for cardiac applications, for pericardial reconstruction. So, very good biodegradability, hemostatic capability, non encapsulation, non calcification. Of course, again the disadvantage is supply limitation, um, immunogenity issue, okay. so may be transmitting disease. Pericardium, a fibrous sac surrounding the mammalian heart. So, you can harvest it from bovine or porcine okay. and then it is decellularized and cross linked using glutaraldehyde for increasing the strength as well as preserving and then this can be used for cardiac repair reconstruction, valve repair and uh, pericardial closures mostly made up this is mostly made up of collagen fibers. So, easy handling characteristics it is elastic uniform suture retention non thrombogenic resist infection Calci big problem is calcification of pericardial grafts uh, after implantation due to cross linking with pyrotoraldegate. Some anti calcification techniques are also there commercially available. If you look at bioprosthetic valves these are for replacement of heart valves. In used in place of mechanical metal heart valves this is again obtained from bovine or porcine. So, it does not require anticoagulants if you use metal you may require that okay. um, failure mainly due to calcification and tearing lacks the strength. So, it can tear or calcify injectable biomaterials like hydrogels made up of alginate, fibrin, chitosan. Okay. Um, so, they are very good biocompatible, good chemical environment able to deliver, it can improve cardiac function, reduce infarct size, increase wall thickness in the infarcted area. So, if there is a wound or infraction okay, it can um, cure it. Alginate hydrogels, they are used uh, temporary ECM substitutes and as affinity binding moieties enabling binding of proteins. So, they can be used for controlled drug release. Fibrin glue as a sealant suppose there is a bleeding and as you know fibrin is a blood clot. So, it can be used for uh, ble preventing bleeding, speed up wound healing and in drug and cell delivery. Chitosine hydrogels for delivery of proteins, drugs and cells. Okay. Uh, of course, engineered tissues these are tissue engineered heart valves still they are under uh, research um, okay, they are being explored, okay, but still they are not come into market as a replacement for bioprosthetic or metal valves actually. Um, engineered of course, they will be biocompatible, we can grow any type of cells on that long duration and so on. Challenges are high mechanical strength to hold the blood pressure and contractive forces there. So, basically you can make it using decellularized aloe or xenografts and cells are then seeded on top of that. Okay. That is the way in which it is made. As I said it is clinically. Uh, not been uh, started. So, what are the biomaterials for cardiac tissue in scaffold based materials like collagen, elastin, fibrin, alginates, silk as scaffolds, synthetic polymers like polyglycolide, PGA, polylactides, polycaprolactone, collagen type 1 sponge scaffolds okay, flexible and porous allowing cellular integration, alginate scaffolds they help efficient seeding retaining high percentage of seeding cells and so on. Okay. Hydrogels, we looked at scaffold based materials hydrogels that means they use polymers which form hydrogels, um, natural hydrogels we talked quite a lot about hydrogels I will not spend much time like gelatin, fibrin, alginate, agarose, haluronate, synthetic polymer based polyacrylic acid, polyvinyl alcohol and so on. So, hydrogels is another approach or decellularized tissues. Okay. So, you take this tissues aloe or xeno and then you decellularized and then cells are seeded. Okay. ECM proteins and tissues have been evaluated as a potential scaffold to support various tissue homographs seeded with cardiac derived mesenchymal stromal cells. Okay. Fibrinyl gel combined with human dermal fibroblast. Okay. So, different types. So, you need to do quite a lot of surface modification because the material has to be in contact with the blood. So, you have to make it blood compatibility whereas in the other places we looked at uh, 
bacterial biofilm issues, um, inflammatory issues and so on. So, we need to here look at blood compatibility, hemolysis and so on actually. So, different types of modification, we have spent a lot of time on surface modification, could be physical, chemical or biofunctional type of modification. Physical could be simple coating a material like uh, coating heparin. Heparin is used quite a lot uh, as the anticoagulant, fibronectin, collagen, vitronectin and so on. Uh, chemical means you couple a material or you graft the material, that is the chemical modification like a titanium nickel coating for ventricular assist devices and titanium oxide on metal stents, these are all chemical. Biofunctionalization endothelium surrounds the entire vasculature, placing endothelial surface on the cardiovascular implants, mimics the natural environment and thus allows better biocompatibility. So, several strategies are used for endothelial promoted surface modification by impregnating the surface with active molecules or vascular cell seeding, but of course, it is very expensive and time consuming. Uh, so, we can construct and nebulize early endothelial progenitor cells at the site of injury, which will secrete angiogenic cytokines, which will flourish the resident okay, and the late uh, EPCs, ECs and EPCs. Okay. They, are, they are still uh, under research and uh, they, they have been tested quite a lot on animal models, but not on human volunteers. Another strategy is to construct the surface with the late EPCs. Okay endothelial progenitor cells, okay, uh, which in turn promotes new angiogenesis and repair the damage side by their native ability to proliferate. Uh, so, we looked at uh, different types of uh, uh, materials that are used in uh, um, cardiovascular that is the, the heart, uh, the valves, the diaphragms, the shunts, the stents okay, and then uh, of course, uh, biologically derived material. Um, trying to grow cells on top of uh, uh, the um, okay on uh, top of uh, some scaffold, injectable biomaterials, um, taking care of uh, infrax, taking care of wounds, and so on. Actually, uh, let's look at uh, some biomaterials that are used in the ocular. That means the eye. Okay, so basically, as you can see, <coughs> the retina is here. Okay. You have the optical nerve which connects with the brain, this is the posterior chamber, this is the anterior chamber, we have the iris, the cornea here and the lens, this is the lens. So, there is a lot of uh, uh, biomaterials used in this place in the eye, okay. um, it is housed in a socket or orbit within the skull. So, we call this the orbit within the skull and there is a soft tissue eyeball or a globe, uh, walls of the globe has three layers outer scleral or corneal layer, intermediate vascular layer and inner retina layer. You can see this inner 1, 2, 3 here. Okay. Uh, linkage of the globe to the central nervous system is achieved via this optical nerve. So, there are a lot of biomaterials trying to replace uh, in this area. Okay. Ocular implants, orbital implants that is uh, orbit is this portion. right? So, that is orbital implant. Uh, so, if there are retinoblastoma, trauma, uveitis, rubiotic glau glaucoma, then you need to um, remove whatever is inside and place orbital implants. So, you remove the globe or its contents followed by implantation of devices into this scleral shell and conjunctival closure. So, glass, cork, ivory, aluminum. Okay. Then modern implants are hydroxyapatite or porous polyethylene. Uh, these materials help cellular invasion and vascularization, which in turn prevents biofilm formation and infection. So, these uh, uh, biomaterials are not meant to um, uh, help the patient to see, but uh, they are used just to fill up the, uh, the actual the orbit. So, originally uh, some inorganic glass and ivory and aluminum were used, later on hydroxapatite polyethylene were used, so that there is a vascularization taking place. Also, it will prevent the uh, biofilm formation and infection. Contact lenses, okay, this is mostly for correcting mild amyotropia. So, you have hard, soft. Hard lenses are using polymethyl methacrylate, 
they have very good excellent optical properties, lightweight, satisfactory surface wettability. The main disadvantage is they got very low oxygen permeability. Uh, so, the patient cannot wear it for a very long time, uh, the eyes become red. Okay. So, these rigid gas permeable contact lenses came into picture. So, it is a co-polymerization of methyl methacrylate with, with methacrylate functionalized siloxins such as methacryloxypropylitris, it is called. So, you co-polymerized methyl methacrylate with the uh, siloxin trimethyl siloxysilane. So, when you do that, so we can change the cross-linker ratio, the so the oxygen permeability can be modified, elasticity, modulus of elasticity can be modified, hardness, wettability can be modified. Okay? That is called rigid gas permeable contact lenses. You also have the soft contact lenses, these are all hydrogels or silicon based material, polyhydroxy ethyl methacrylate hydrogels okay, discovered in 1961. They have very good wettability, contains 38 percent water comfortable to the wearer. Okay, so, that is the soft contact lenses. So, other hydrophilic monomers used for the preparation of hydrogel lenses are N, vinyl, pyridone, glyceryl methacrylate. Of course, uh, one disadvantage is the tear, they can get tear, tone. The oxygen permeability which is very, very important in contact lenses, it, it depends on the thickness of the lens and the amount of water that is present. So, oxygen permeability increase with water content. Okay. Second type of con soft contact lens are made up of silicone elastomer, polydimethyl siloxane PDMS. Okay. The first type is uh, polyhema, second type is polydimethyl siloxane. It has excellent optical properties and also good tear resistance and high oxygen permeability. But the low surface energy leads to very poor tear wetting and hence a tendency to bind tear lipids and contact lens adhesion to the cornea. Okay. So, the low surface energy means it has got very high uh, contact angle. So, when uh, tear drops come down, it does not wet properly. So, the lipids get bound, okay, they get adhered to the cornea. So, there are many companies which make uh, this uh, contact lenses as you can see from here list. I mean you do not have to bother much, but basically look at this silicone acrylate, fluoro silicone, fluoropolymer, silicone acrylate, HEMA, HEMA, okay, peridone, okay, PDMS based materials, so a lot of uh, materials. So, and if you look at the water content, uh, mostly the soft contact lenses you have very high water content. Look at the oxygen permeability, it is fantastic. When you have PDMS, uh, water content is low oxygen con permeability is very high because uh, it become very hydrophobic water content is very poor, but then uh, oxygen permeability is very very high. Um, so, if you want to have a balance here you know some of these methyl methacrylate and vinyl pyridone water content is also high oxygen permeability is also high. Okay. Uh, intracorneal implants implanted within the cornea and therefore, serve merely to augment the natural corneal function to correct conditions such as myopia and hyperopia made up of flint glass then PMMA, PMMA as uh, I have been talking good optical and mechanical properties, biocompatible dis disadvantage, disruption of nutrient transport across the cornea, rejection, epithelial thinning over the implant, decreased keratocyte density anterior to the lens and stromal opacity. So, hydrogel intracorneal lenses now are being looked at. Okay, to improve the nutrient transport. But then of course, these have very poor refractive index when compared to PMMA type. Uh, polysulfone intracorneal lenses have very high refractive index, but are impermeable to aqueous solution and hence prevents uh, nutrient transportion. So, there is uh, uh, some problem uh, if you are looking at hydrogels or if you are looking at PMMA or if you are looking at uh, polysulfone based material. Okay. Um, PMMA has very good optical properties, but uh, the new, the problem of nutrient transport, hydrogels, okay, they have very poor refractive index, but uh, uh, nutrient transport is very good. Okay, uh, keratoprosthesis. What is this? 
this is a permanent indwelling device. This involves full thickness penetration of the cornea and result in the full substitution of the corneal function that is penetrating total replacements of the cornea. Following the removal of epithelial layer and extraction of the underlying corneal stroma and endothelium, PMMA implant is placed in the extracted tissue and this tissue with the keratoprosthesis are then sutured back into the eye that is called a keratoprosthesis. This carried out to improve the retention of keratoprosthesis, collagen is coated on the implant, but PMMA keratoprosthesis are still not largely used. Okay. These are now made from quite a lot of material like polyolefins and vitreous carbon and so on actually. Okay. Intraocular lenses that is cataract extraction after that the they place a lens, intraocular lens it is called. This is a very common nowadays, it is an ophthalmic surgical procedure. This is inserted to compensate for the loss of the natural crystalline lens. PMMA has been the standard for a very very long time. Low surface energy results in both corneal endothelial damage or an insertion and post operative adhesion of inflammatory cells leading to iris adhesion okay, to the IOL that is intraocular. So, how do they overcome? They produce high polished surface, make both soft high energy surfaces using N, um, N vinyl pyridone and HEMA, hard low energy surface using perfluoropropane, binding of heparin and hyaluronic acid to the outer surface of the lens coating with phospho, uh, phosphoryl choline based polymer. So, different types of approaches are being used actually. Um, so, reduce protein adsorption, cellular addition and neutrophil activation, reduce cellular deposition onto the lens. Okay. So, we looked at uh, uh, some of the biomaterials used in ocular region. Okay. As you can see PMMA is used because of its very good uh, um, optical properties. Okay. But then uh, it's got some disadvantages, okay, especially in oxygen transport and so on. And then we have uh, uh, soft contact lenses, um, which will retain water quite a lot, like your HEMA. Um, then we also talked about uh, nutrition uh, diffusion becomes a problem, okay. So you need to balance between all these uh, various factors to achieve um, a good uh, device to be placed in the eye region. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.